everyone. Okay, so we're doing problem number 36 on page 121 from tonight's homework in section 2.7. Um, and we're doing a proof. I have the uh, given already written down. So the given is angle 1 and angle 2 are supplements, and angle 3 and angle 4 are supplements. And also angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the diagram so that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And then I'm going to look at the given and see if there's anything I can come up with just based on the given. So not even looking at, we're trying, at what we're trying to prove. Um, what can we say based on, you know, the first part of the given? So I see the keyword here is supplements. So I'm going to say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. And I can also say that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. Um, and that's because of the definition of supplementary angles. And we're okay with just definition of supplementary, and that's fine. Okay, so now we want to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So if we're trying to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, notice I have angle 2 over here, right? So I have angle 2 over here, and I have angle 3 over here. Um, so I have 2 as part of one equation, and 3 as part of the other equation. And both equations are equal to 180 degrees. So how are we going to try and relate angle 2 and angle 3 in one equation. So the next thing that I'm going to do is set this entire section equal to this entire section because they both equal 180 degrees. So this is because of the transitive property. So think of it as like a long train of equal signs. So if measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 and 180 is equal to 180, then 180 is equal to measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 4. So in step 3, I'm going to say measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 4. Okay? And I used the transitive property, which can also be substitution. Um, technically, I could have substituted this whole entire thing in for 180. As well. Okay, so now I have 3 and 2 in some kind of relationship here in this um, equation, but I need to get rid of measure of angle 1 and measure of angle 4. Now also notice that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, so I want to start to substitute certain things in to this equation, but before I can use substitution, I need to switch angle 1 and angle 4 into an equals statement. So I'm going to say measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 4 using the definition of congruence. Okay, so now that I know that, I can take angle 4, the measure of angle 4, and I can substitute it in for the measure of angle 1. Now the whole point of that is now I'm going to get measure of angle 4 on both sides of the equal sign. And then I can get rid of them by subtracting. So step 5 is going to be a substitution step. I'm going to say measure of angle 4 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 4. And that's substitution. Substitution property. Okay. Then for 6, okay, what I can do here is I am actually going to fix this because I need a little bit of space. I can subtract the measure of angle 4 from both sides. Okay, so um, they wind up subtracting out, and I get step 6 as measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle 3 because of the subtraction property.
And then my last step, seven, is going to be using the definition of congruence to switch back to congruence. So angle two is congruent to angle three because of the definition of congruence. And we're done.